So our first activity in SEO is to get a basic understanding of the search engine conceptually, how it works, and such. So go ahead and open up your web browser. Go ahead and have a seat anywhere. Go ahead and open up your web browser, any web browser you like. We've got all the popular ones down here. And then we will go to google.com. In addition to doing this lecture and showing you things and you doing it as well, I'm going to make notes on the computer here and I'll put these notes in the network folder at the end of the day. I'll remind you where the network folder is later on. I'm gonna write notes on the computer and you're welcome also to open up Microsoft Word or whatever and you can write notes on our computer, or take notes on paper, whatever. What I'm gonna write down here also, I'll give you these notes by the end of the day. So first, we'll go to google.com, and then we'll say here, SEO, search engine optimization. SEM, search engine marketing. So most of you that came in, you've heard of, to various degrees, SEO. And uh, no one raised their hands about SEM. That's fine. That's kind of a newer generation of this because search engines is a website that helps you find stuff. What is one possible search engine you might have heard of? Google.com. Good. Any other search engines you might have heard of? Yahoo.com, yes. Anything else? Bing.com. Anything else? Lycros. Lycros, yeah. AltaVista. AltaVista, classic, yeah. AltaVista. There's another one. One more. Duck, uh. duck, go. So all of these are search engines. And uh, some of you might remember Yahoo, and some of you might have heard of Bing, and some of you, what's DuckDuckGo? Well, there's plenty, of, there's lots of websites out there, but Google is the big famous one. So big, so famous that it's become a verb. You say, Google it. I don't know what that is. Google it, which is trying to say, search for it online. Um, there's been discussion about the, the word Google might become genericized. You've heard of Kleenex, right? You've heard of uh, Scotch tape. You've heard of dumpster. Those are actually trademarked words from a company. There's a company called Dumpster, which is you know the dumpster brand trash receptacle. You've heard of Kleenex. Well, that's a Kleenex brand facial tissue. But those words have become so generic that now it's simply Kleenex or dumpster or whatever these other words that have become generic. So people are saying, is Google going to become generic? There's already been lawsuits uh, against Google it becoming generic because now everyone says, yeah, Google it. And what we're trying to say is search online. So I bring that up also because we're going to cover two search engines in this class, Google, the big famous one, but then also Bing. Bing is the second place most popular search engine at the moment. And back in the 90s, Yahoo was number one. And now it's not. It's really, really low in usage and popularity. Google is the big one. Back in the day, Yahoo had about like 98% usage. Everyone that was going online to search was Yahooing it. They were searching on Yahoo, about 98% usage. Um, what do you think maybe Google is at? It's a trick question. Maybe. How much? 99. 99, maybe. Anyone else? 90. It's, uh, it's somewhere around 60%. But it's so famous, I, everyone uses the word, and it's so famous. Well, uh, there's also more competition. Back in the day, Yahoo was the only search engine. It was like one of the first search engines. Uh, for websites. So obviously it got that high because there wasn't any competition and it had a very revolutionary type of algorithm. Let me come back to this term in a moment, algorithm. Go 
little ribbon. And so Yahoo back in the 90s, in the 90s had um, a very high usage. Nowadays, Google, you can see it actually more like 60 to 70 percent, somewhere around there uh, in the tens. Uh, and Bing, uh, it's uh, approximately somewhere around 20 to uh, 30 percent. Uh, depending on the measurement, not everyone can agree on these things, so this is a very big range, but Bing is about 20 to 30 percent. You might say, oh, why well, it's so high? I've never heard of it. I've never used it. But this is global traffic. This is uh, traffic all over the place of people um, uh, using these search engines. So at one point, Bing had 0%. No one was using Bing. And now more and more people are using Bing. And I don't think they're going to ever take over Google, but they are increasing their market share. So what these percentages are, are hundreds of millions, probably billions of searches. So even at 20% at the low end there, that's still hundreds of millions of people searching for something. So you may have never used Bing or never heard of it or don't know anyone that uses it, but lots of people use it. So that's why in this class I'm going to cover both Bing and Google. And Yahoo uh, actually has contracts with Bing and Google to get results from Bing and Google. So we're not really covering Yahoo directly because they get results basically from Google and Bing. They kind of subcontract it. So a search engine is a website that helps you find stuff. And these are the, the two big players that we'll talk about, Google and Bing. They both have an algorithm, proprietary software, spell check on this sorry proprietary sure proprietary software uh, that uh, determines the best result when people search I go to Google I go to Bing I type what I'm looking for I'm looking for a dentist so I type dentist uh, Google and Bing take that word search through their database of all the dentists that they know about and give you a result well, in the old days, the algorithm was not so smart. It would say, okay, you're looking for a dentist. Here's a great dentist, John Smith in New York. Uh, I live in San Diego, so I can't go to New York. So there were various tips and tricks and techniques that a website, a webmaster, a, a web creator would employ to reach higher on the results. One technique in the old days was to use a keyword over and over and over and over. Dentist. John Smith, dentist in New York would put the word dentist on their website address, on the first line of, the, of their text, in their logo, in their footer, everywhere. They would put their, uh, that word dentist all over the place. And then the older search engines would say, OK, well, because this website used that keyword so much, they've got to be the best. We'll make them number one. But that doesn't make sense, because they're in New York and I'm in San Diego. So the algorithms evolved. Google started to create an algorithm that was even better, that was giving better results. When someone searched dentist, it understood, OK, you're in San Diego. So I'm going to give you results of dentists in San Diego. So the algorithm is what changes, what's proprietary, what's a trade secret that they're not going to release fully. So a lot of what SEO is is experimentation and trial and error and theory about how to rank well because the search engine the company Google the company Bing does not want to give their secret away so that the other guy steals it so SEO SEO is the or are the techniques the webmaster uses to understand the algorithm to rank better. I don't know how it fully works. No one really knows how it fully works, except those that work at Google or Bing or Yahoo or Lycos or whatever. But there are various guidelines that the search engines themselves will give you to rank well. So let's see how this works in action here. We're on Google. Dot yes. Does that mean that Yahoo doesn't write their own algorithms anymore? Or? I'm sure they still have a version of it. 
but they really rely nowadays on those two. Just a few years ago, they were relying on Bing's results only. And then recently, like in the last year or so, they also set up a contract with Google. So I'm sure there's some sort of algorithm that Yahoo employs because they get results from both Google and Bing, and they want to show the best results there. So we're at Google.com. Let's do this. Uh, right here, let's, um, let's search here for yourself. Type your name here as you are commonly known. For example, if, uh, if, if I'm William Jefferson Clinton, I want to search for myself as Bill Clinton, as I'm commonly known. So as you are commonly known, search for your name. Okay, so search for your, your name. You may get a pop-up asking for a location. You can ignore that for the moment. But that's one of the modern aspects of search, uh, location-based. We'll talk about that later. I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, close that. So I get here. I get here a result. Uh, and no, I am not an actor. And no, I was not born in 1935. So this is not me. This is a different Victor Campos. The results here, however, show, OK, top result, Victor Campos at the Internet Movie Database, the actor. Victor Campos at San Diego Continuing Education. That one is me. That This is continuing education. What else over here? Victor Campos, RT, Manning and Cass, I guess lawyers or something in Los Angeles. Uh, Victor Campos, there's my LinkedIn right there. Uh, Victor Campos at Southwestern College, that's me. Uh, Victor Campos, Facebook, that's not me. Uh, some pictures of Victor Campos's out there. Here's me. Victor Campos Leal, that's not me. I'm just showing here different results. Out of 4 million results, these are the top 10. These are the 10 that Google believes are the best results of searching this term or this query. So just to hear the terminology. Search engines use your query, your search term, to find the best results, best in quotes. Because these things are always changing and improving. And we'll see, we'll talk about why a little later. So when you searched for yourself, how many of you got at least one result that is you? A few people, OK. Open another window. So I'm in, the, I'm in this window, in this tab, and your browser, open a new tab or a new window. And now let's go to bing.com. And at bing.com, B-I-N-G, you're going to search also for your name exactly the same. So I'll open a new window, bing.com. It's another search engine. If you've never used it before, this is Bing. It looks very different from Google. It's very much more colorful. But it's the same idea, a search engine. Type here to search the world. And you get other news things and all of that. And a cool picture of the day is that the Guggenheim, maybe. But it's a search engine. It's a website that helps you find things online. Google is the big famous one, but it's not the only one. Google market share at one point did increase all the way up to like you know 85%. Then Bing came out. And Google started to decrease. And again, I don't think Google is going to go down to the realms of Yahoo. And I don't think Bing is going to take over from Google. But Google did start to decrease, is decreasing in usage, and Bing is increasing. So it's good to cover both uh, throughout this class. So try it out here. Search for your name again, exactly as you searched in Google. <coughs> uh, Bing gives 4.3 million results as it thinks are the best but here's the first top 10 and it first shows a few images and then it shows the same internet movie database result number one it shows this Facebook number two LinkedIn number three the lawyer that has one star review so again that's not me the actor, actor, white pages, someone in Georgia, 
And as a matter of fact here, I don't get any results that are me in, in Bing. So just putting them side by side here. So on Google, uh, I think there were three or four results that were me, and on Bing there, there were none. Maybe I could go to page two, maybe I'll find myself on page two, but I'm just showing you here that this is the algorithm in play. We use the exact same term or query. Both search engines are searching the exact same internet. But Google said, here's 4 million results you might be interested in. And Bing said, here's 4.3 million results you might be interested in. And in this case, more results isn't necessarily better. I did not appear. Less results doesn't mean worse either. I appeared more. And it believes, well, most of the time people searching for Victor Campos are searching for the actor. So most of the results that appear are for the actor. And over here, they say, well, most of the time people are searching, they're searching for the instructor. So I appear more over here. In this case, you might say, well, Google result is better if you're searching for me. But then you might say, the Bing result is better because I'm searching for the actor. So that's why we need to cover both of the search engines. Yes? Just so this is a weird question, but you said both of them search the internet. We use the internet. What? Where is, it? is the internet? Who hosts? It's over the there, and it's over there, there, and it's over there. It goes Who over there. hosts it? Everyone hosts Who it. Who owns it? No one. It's a very complex topic uh, to mention, but basically, the internet is a series of computers all over the world. So, a piece of the internet is in San Diego. A piece of the internet is in San Diego, Texas. A piece of the internet is in San Diego, Venezuela. A piece of the internet is in Kyoto and Moscow and all over the world. So it's just a computer that connects to another computer throughout the world. So the internet is all of the world's computers connected, basically. And who owns it is technically where the computer is at. It's governed by the laws of that country. So technically, you can kind of say that website, which is on the internet, on that computer in that country is owned by that country. But no one, it's been designed in a way that no one really owns it. Anyone can connect to it, and uh, it's global. Question? Um, in Bing, it appears LinkedIn and Facebook, and the, all kinds of results, it's me. Sure. But in Google, it's the same, but no Facebook. Is there that a reason for this? It's just that the algorithm, each one believes this is the better result. Okay. Now, however, with, with Facebook results, the companies will, will officially tell you these are completely unbiased results. And unfortunately, we have, we've, seen, we've seen examples where it's not super, where it's not completely with no bias. Because uh, Google, OK, Facebook is a social network. And Google has their own social network, Google Plus. So you could argue, oh, I didn't see the result of Facebook social network on Google because Google has their own social network. Now, the company will tell you officially, no, we're going to show you the best results always. But there have been studies and, and proof showing that there is bias in these things. So I have, I'm, I'm going to believe them that there's no bias. But you just sh showed right there that there is no Facebook result in Google. Yeah. But there was a Facebook result in Bing. So that's why we want to learn both and rank well on both. So in this class, I'm going to generically say search. I'm never going to say Google it because there's, there's more than one search engine. I want to say search it. Right? That's, that's what Googling means, search on the internet. So I would recommend for you to use that terminology as well, because we're searching. We don't, we're not always going to be on Google, and not everyone uses Google. Some people Bing it, and some people Yahoo it. So search it. Yes? So who's using Bing? Bing is becoming very more popular, because when you buy a brand new computer at Walmart or Best Buy or Costco, and if you buy a brand new Windows computer, Windows, who's the company behind Windows? Microsoft. Who's the company behind Bing? Microsoft. If you didn't know, the company behind Bing is Microsoft. So here's again that bias. Automatically, when you get a brand new Windows computer, it will be set to Bing. So people can change it, and people do change it. I want to go back to Google. And some people don't know or don't care. They just search to get a result. They don't care if it came from Google or Bing or whatever. They want a result. I need a dentist. So Bing is increasing because Windows computers are the most popular kind of computer. Even though Apple, Macs are very famous, 
80% of the world uses a Windows computer. So they're increasing there. My friend bought a Prius a few years ago, and she's got a cool little touch panel on it to search. Guess what? It searches Bing. So her car has Bing built in. Windows computer has Bing built in. iPhones. When iPhones first came out, they had a contract with Google. So when you searched on an iPhone in the beginning, you got Google results. Well, after a while, the contract ended, and Apple went with Microsoft. So some iPhones and Macs also are starting to use the Bing search engine built in. And this can be changed. You go to your settings and you change it. And a lot of times, the search engine themselves, when you go to it, you say, hey, make, make Bing your home page. So because of various factors, Bing is increasing. And I use it all the time. One of the reasons I personally like Bing also is it, uh, it has this reward system that you get points when you use it. And those points can then be cashed in for Amazon gift cards, Starbucks gift cards. I've, I've literally made like $60 in the last few years just using Bing because it adds up the points and then eventually I get gift certificates. But that's, uh, that's is that just that email what, what is the email? Uh, points or credits from Microsoft. Most likely, yeah. Microsoft and Microsoft points, Bing points, that's what that is. And, and it does work. It, like I said, I've, I've, uh, I've gotten a bunch of gift certificates from them over the years. So Google doesn't give you that. So, okay, here's a search result that we did. You get different results, but they're both searching the same internet, the same global network. Let's do this now. Let's search. If you've got a company, uh, a website, let's search for your company. If you don't have a company, you can use my company, which is PMD Interactive. But if you've got a company, If you're getting suggestions, ignore the suggestions. Just let's do this kind of search. Just type in the name of your company or any company. Maybe I'm a lawyer and you know my name is, is the is the name of the company, but maybe I'm a lawyer and I would search for Victor Campos lawyer. You know, just try to do a search for your business, both on Google and Bing. So again, comparing the two algorithms, looking at Google first. In this, res in this case, Google says there's 347,000 results. And I'm seeing the PMD Interactive homepage. There's our homepage, our homepage of the website. Next up, Yelp reviews. Next up, our YouTube. Next up, our Facebook, Alignable, etc., etc. Our uh, MapQuest, Twitter, and all of that. So almost all of these results are our company, except Psychomedics Corporation. That's not us. So nine out of these 10 results is our company. And also, we have a little map over here comparing Bing. Number one result is also our home page. Look at this. I've got all of these extra links. These are called deep links. Bing is giving deep links in this case. Your may, yours may be different, but just in my example, so example, s searching PMD Interactive, Bing gives deep links, links deeper than the home page. I go to pmdinteractive.com, that's the home page, that's the top level. Anything besides that is a lower, deeper level. About page, contact page, portfolio page, whatever, those are deeper than the home page. Bing, in this result, in this example, is giving deep links on the home page. So it's showing, um, go read their blog, go check out request a quote, uh, go look at uh, photography portfolio and such and then also a separate result of services <coughs> so just based on that that's very useful in that it it goes deeper Yelp reviews listed there um, 
Yelp, Facebook. Besides that, it's almost the same thing. Here's a here's Vimeo. How many of you have heard of Vimeo before? If you haven't, it's another video site. Besides Vimeo, what other video sites might you have heard of? YouTube. Interesting here. Vimeo is higher than YouTube. Who owns YouTube? Google. So here's again that possible bias that we're seeing. I've never heard of Vimeo, and why are they higher than YouTube? Well, the algorithm claimed that this is a better result. And then over on Google, um, YouTube is third place because it's their own property. The Google company owns Google Search, owns YouTube, owns Android, if you've got an Android phone. It owns Google Maps. It owns Google Mail, also known as Gmail. So all of these big companies have their hands in a lot of technology stuff. And here we are seeing different results on each search engine because each feels this is the best result. And it's not perfect because it's also saying you might be interested in the PMD microderm, microderm abrasion skin thing. No, we don't sell that, but it's there. And then a map. This one's nice because it says directions. So based on the two results we got here, which which you think is better? Bing. You could argue yes, Bing, because this pops up right away, big and bold. Let me go to their homepage. Deep links, better map. This one looks kind of generic. So this one said 347,000 results. 697,000. Just that number doesn't matter that much because, again, most people are going to look at the first page. I don't care if I get 2 million results. I'm going to look at 20 results max, page 1, page 2, probably. So that number really doesn't matter at all. Question? Are you um, or PMD doing anything to manipulate either or, or you're just putting the data out there, the information out there? That's a deeper question for the whole class that we're going to talk about. No, I mean relative to these two. No. Nope. We're not doing any extra um, algorithmic techniques, which we'll cover in the class. This is just a raw search. I, I, didn't, I didn't tilt the scale to show this often. No, not this, but you pay one or the other. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. So um, this is the comparing and contrasting of the search engines. I could go on to the next page, next page, next page, whatever. But the, the point of that also, when I searched for, uh, for the name, uh, that was a very specific kind of search, and I got a specific result. I searched for my company, and so in our company, we do web design, we do social media. So we're number one. But that's, that's, that's a fake result. Of course we're number one. We search for the name of the company. Our company does web design, one of the many things. So let's do one more search. Search for a topic of what your company does. And do it very basically at the moment. If you know any of these other techniques, just don't do them just yet. Meaning, I'm a lawyer, so I'll type lawyer. Don't type lawyer in San Diego. Just type very basically a keyword. So we do web design. I'm going to type web design. Ignore the other suggestions and just type web design on both search engines or whatever your business is. If, you, if your business does tile, then, then just type tile. Uh, don't go too detailed just yet.
So I'm writing some notes here. Um, when we search for a name, that was just to show the range of results. It's looking all over the internet and it found a result on Facebook, a website, LinkedIn, whatever. So it's a bunch of things that it finds. When I searched for the exact name of the company, it showed some deep links, but also to show what else the search engine knows about your business. Because it, it showed um, it showed our website, but also our Facebook, our, our Yelp, our LinkedIn, and, and so forth. So what else is outside of your website? And then searching for web design is going to show you the challenge in getting found. So let's see what we get in Google. It kind of, even though I rejected it, it kind of knows my general location. It popped up and says, would you like to share your location? I canceled it. It still kind of knows I'm in San Diego. This is, again, the evolution of these search engines. Back in the 90s, I searched for web design, and it would give me the best web design company in Germany. Well, I wanted one in San Diego. So these are smarter, because nowadays, our, our web browsers and our computers transmit so much information we're not even aware of. One of them is a general location. So it thinks, OK, you're somewhere in San Diego. Let me give you great results for web design in San Diego. Let me also give you a result of the theory of what web design is. Worthless. That's not what I'm looking for. I need a web designer. But it gave me results of here's what web design is. I don't care. I need a web designer. Then I get these results over here on a map. I'll come back to these in a moment. And then I get a bunch of results over here. Top 15 web designers in San Diego. Web design in San Diego. Yelp. San Diego web design, dogandrooster.com. A web design article on Wikipedia. Again, a theory of what web design is. San Diego web design, tiny frog. Techless web design. Dot com, Behance, etc. So I get uh, it says there were 223 million results. Here's the first top 10. Some of them are articles. Here's how here's enroll in, in learning web design. Well, I don't have time to learn web design, I need a web designer. So this is to show you that even though I search for a certain term, I did not appear here. My company did not appear here anywhere. And I'm getting some results that are, that are of a company, and I'm also getting results that are not of a company. This is to show you the challenge about what people are searching for and what kind of results you might get. Because mixed in with one of these sort of keyword searches, you might get real company results. articles on the topic or tangentially related uh, results. They're on a tangent. They're related, but they're not exactly what I'm looking for. It gave me a result of a college where I can learn web design. And I don't need that. Let me check out Bing. So on, on Bing, if I search web design top result best web design wix.com I get a little what is web design uh, I get a map also the map is in a slightly different place or targeting a slightly different place then I get some pictures I get news about web design the psychology behind web design news articles and I get jacobtyler.com there's Wikipedia again a Google result. So here is the opposite of what we said earlier about the bias. Here Bing is showing a top result directly about Google. So different results, same term, to again show a variety of things. A search engine results page, which is a SERP search engine results page gives you 10 results can give you 10 gentle information such as articles news maps <coughs> definitions <coughs> besides the real results you're looking for. 
I expected to get a list of 10 web designers that I can hire here in San Diego. I got like three or four real companies, and I got an article about web design is, I got a top 15 article, I got a news report about the psychology of web design, and there's only 10 of those slots. So this is to show there is a very small amount of possible results, 10, before going on to the next page, and that's why it's very hard to rank well on the first result page. There's a lot of competition. Usually, yes, and these are the things we'll talk about in detail. Usually a lot of competition. Usually a lot of competition to get on the first page. Competition in the terms of organic and paid results. So paid results make sense. What do you think paid results means? Someone paid X dollars to rank highly. What do you think then? Organic means free. free. So someone did not pay, but engaged in other tactics to rank, to rank highly. Um, the search engines will gladly take your money to rank you higher. So just for some vague random numbers, let's say I pay $10 to be number one when someone searches web design. So I'm number one, and I get clients. $10 well spent. But then my competitor pays $12 for number one, so I become number two. OK, well, I'm going to pay $15. So I'm back to number one. Well, then my competitor pays $20. And they're back to number one. Okay, I'm going to pay $50, so I'm back on number one. So that's generally this paid aspect of SEO. The more you pay, the better you'll rank, the more visibility. Even if you are a completely non-related entity, you can usually pay these search engines. They'll gladly take your money to rank well. Um, so. I'm in a constant arms race with my competitors to pay more. And when I stop paying, slowly I start to dip down again. So it does sound like a scam. Well, it's a scam also, like in the real world, when I pay to put my billboard on the freeway, like I pay to put my ad in the newspaper, like I pay the person on the sidewalk spinning that sign, I have to pay in the real world for visibility and marketing and commercials in the real world, and we don't quite think of it as a scam there. It's necessary. I'm a restaurant on Main Street. I better put uh, an ad in the Union Tribune, and I better put an ad on the radio. Uh, word of mouth is not going to bring people enough to my restaurant. Uh, usually, I have to pay in the real world some form of advertising and marketing. So we shouldn't then feel, well, it's a scam online. Why would I pay the search engine to rank well? Well, the search engine is the modern newspaper, the modern billboard, the modern radio. So you need to get the taste out of your mouth that I don't want to pay these companies to rank. It does give you results to pay. But it is a constant thing that when you stop paying, it stops working, like it stops working in the real world. So. Uh, it's a uh, constant tactic. Pay X to rank to get views to get results. The, you'll pay to rank up there, but that doesn't mean you're actually going to make sales. You're going to be number one, but that doesn't always translate to a sale or res a result. Just like putting your ad on the newspaper doesn't mean you will always get results. Yes? Is, is Wix paying like $5 million? To be Probably. Good point, because I did see Wix as number one, right? 
number one really really big at the top there I don't know how much they're paying from checking right here there's other ways to kind of find out but yeah look at that they're number one so they're the number one bestest of all web designers right well no uh, if you see the ad this is listed as an ad that's an ad looking at Google um, Google at the moment is putting their ads at the bottom in my result and they're marked a little bit more obviously so if I'm a company that is gonna pay to rank higher I'm gonna pay to rank higher which of these two is a better result Google or Bing the question is I've spent the amount of money to rank higher well Google is putting the higher paid results at the very end and Bing is putting the higher paid results at the top so just by that Bing is gonna be more valuable to me to pay Bing to rank higher what's that okay it might be different results for different people that, that's interesting so you you do have the Google Ads at the top okay interesting so each of the web, uh, websites believes they're doing it the right way that's their algorithm and so and so paying can give me some result now a lot of us probably are pretty savvy and the question right away was well they paid for it well yeah a lot of us are pretty savvy the web websites have been around since 1989 so over you know 20 what is that now 27 years 28 years whatever websites have been around let's say over 25 years the internet has been around longer <coughs> since the 60s but websites have been around 25 years let's round it up so people have gotten more savvy people use websites go on the web a lot more and people know about ads and fake stuff online and people are more cynical or savvy whatever but there's plenty of people out there that are not or don't care meaning that yeah right away I saw over here Wix is number one and it's an ad and it's not so obvious in Bing but a lot of people will see oh they are number one they are the best I will click it money well spent for them uh, and it even says right there best web design truth and advertising right mm -hmm. so there is a huge cohort of people that won't know or won't care uh, or will accidentally click on the first result which is a paid result and that's fine it worked they got a client and they made the money back and yes there's also a huge amount of people that will say I hate ads I will never click an ad I run seven ad blockers on my computer and I'll never click that's fine then that's when the uh, organic comes in in the organic notice here and Bing paid 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 you might think this is paid but I'll come back to it let's assume paid uh, article worthless 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 the very first result is so far down the very first real result is so far down on the page look at how far I found like 75 percent of the way down and the very first real result is right there and it's real because it doesn't say ad comparing with Google okay that's obviously fake ad maybe skip that there's an article about top results okay fake uh, Yelp I don't care the first result here is also the first real result of a real company is not until this third here and I'm almost halfway through the page so these search search engines change they evolve you might say well that hurts me as my as a business I have to pay I, I, I have to fight with competition with Wikipedia I have to fight with maps and all of that stuff um, and and yeah nowadays modern SEO I have to say modern SEO is complicated but not hard and what I like to say is um, something can be complicated but it doesn't have to be hard I think complication is a lot of steps or a lot of details but each individual step or detail is not that complicated but all together there's a complication but it's not hard I have to do seven things but each of those little things is not that hard it's just complicated 
So all of this stuff we're talking about so far and what we'll talk about for the next two weeks, there's a lot of little things to talk about, figure out. Each of them is not that hard to do. It's just a lot of things to do. It's complicated. Modern SEO is a moving target. The algorithm changes all the time. What used to work in the 90s, like I said, I'm going to use the keyword dentist on my website, victordentist.com. I'm going to use it on my logo, Victor the Dentist. I'm going to use it on my very first title, Victor is a Dentist. I'm going to use it in the footer, the sidebar, everywhere. I'm going to use dentist over and over and over. And in the old days, that worked because the search engine algorithms were not so smart. And then so it would say, OK, this website in all over the world, this website has used that keyword the most. Therefore, they're the best. But they're in Moscow. Well, I'm not going to go to Moscow for a dentist. I'm not going to go to New York. I'm not going to go to Santee. I want a, I want a uh, dentist in Chula Vista, or, or here in San Diego, or here in Sarah Mesa, Kearney Mesa. So the search engines had to evolve to take into account location and intent, and mostly because of the constant barrage of spam fake sites, sites that sell shady merchandise, web designers that are shady and doing techniques and figuring out the search engines and breaking them to get the best result. When the, when the spammers figured out, oh, all we need to do is, is put every variation of a word on our site, even the misspelled ones, we're going to rank better than a real company. Once they figured out, oh, we can do this technique where we, uh, where we put invisible text on the site to rank better, you know, they, they, they corrupted it. They, they corrupted this algorithm that the search engine was designed to do to find the best results. So spammers are always trying to figure out how to break the search engine to get better results. Therefore, the search engines have to change every few months. And so a technique that used to work a few months ago doesn't work anymore because the spammers broke it. So that's why in this class we have to cover the latest techniques. These things change. There are some things that are evergreen. But I will talk about do's and don'ts, like don't do this technique anymore. Because some of these techniques have fallen so out of favor, now they're negative. In the old days, you would do a certain technique. But now, because it's been abused, if you do that technique now, it actually hurts you. So we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Uh, we have black hat SEO, white hat SEO. Black hat, bad techniques, that help you rank. White hat, good techniques rank. This comes from the classic cowboy movies. When the bad guys came in and shot up the town, what kind of hats were they wearing? Black hats. When the sheriff came into town to clean up the town, what kind of hat did he have? White hat. So black hat techniques, um, example, keyword stuffing, which is what I said earlier. Dentist. I'm going to abuse the word dentist, putting it so many times, even, even oddly, grammatically and such. I'm going to use the word dentist so many times on my site. And it used to be that the more times you had a keyword on your site, the better. Well, it still sounds like it would work nowadays, but it doesn't, and it's actually detrimental. In these search engines, if you do these black hat SEO techniques, it's going to hurt you. You may have been number one, number two, and then you're going to stop dropping, and now you're on page 50 because there's such a problem with spam. So I'll point them out as we go on, uh, but one of them, like keyword stuffing, abusing the system, what the spammers would do is uh, another one, which would be invisible text. Right now, I'm typing black text on a white background. If I change the color of my font to white, white text on a white background is invisible. 
And so the spammers will write whole paragraphs of hidden text full of keywords, every kind of keyword to try to trick people to come to my site. And I wouldn't be able to see it, but the search engines would, and the search engine would be tricked. Yeah, this is full of 50 keywords, so it's got to be the best site. But no, it's selling Rolex watches, and I was searching for a dentist. So invisible text was a technique that the bad guys used, the black hats. And white hat is basically current approved techniques approved by the search engines. Black hat, white hat, and there's one in the middle. Anyone guess what that one is? Gray. Gray hat SEO. Techniques that used to work that are being phased out. They've the search engines have started to see that these techniques are being abused. The search engines have said, have told us, these techniques are going to be phased out. Don't use them by next year. Eventually, they get phased out. They're no longer good. If you're still using them, not good. Because, unfortunately, search engines operate under guilty until proven innocent if you use if you use um, if you use black hat techniques um, you will be marked as a spammer there's so many websites out there and this constant barrage of spam the search engines have to operate in this way in that if you're using these techniques that are bad, that we've defined as bad, your website is bad. Now, I believe you, you're not a bad person, your website's not bad, but Google won't, Bing won't, Yahoo won't. They will say this, this website seems to exhibit techniques of a spammer, therefore it is a spammer. And suddenly you're on page 90. And it's very hard to climb out of that hole of bad SEO, but we'll cover it in the class. Yes? Uh, where's, like, where's the line with it? Like, where's the line of you need to have these words for your website to show up and then the, the search engines, when we get into it, I think on day two, probably by day three at the latest, we will log into the official webmaster tools of each of the search engines. And we will see there the whole manual, basically, that tells us this is what you should be doing. So the search engines themselves can guide us to what's good and what's bad. But some things, they are proprietary that they will not tell you a hard value. Make sure you don't have more than seven keywords. They won't tell you that because there's competition between all the search engines. But they will give us guidelines, not maybe not maybe hard values and such, but guidelines. And if we're within the guidelines, we should be fine. So they're not giving you any indication of when they're going to change the algorithm, right? They do. They they do. They they don't want to. They want to they want to tell us legitimate people what's going to happen, and they keep us up to date usually on their blogs. Oh. So we, when we go to the Webmaster Tools, that's the official homepage of the search engines, and they will be telling us there's a new algorithm coming in this time, and here's what we're changing. Make sure your site does this and not that. So it's not t totally secret what's happening, but some of the more back-end algorithmic stuff is secret. So let's take our first break. Uh, it's just about to be 11. Well, we'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 11.05-ish. When we come back, we'll go on. <laughs>